bank gets an addition that makes a, a very nice courtyard in front, uh, excellent cafe restaurant, Southwestern, uh, 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 Southwestern working. Uh, this continues, there's a, there's, this is an infill, replacing a bad building, this is an infill. Nothing enormous, no, no silver bullets, just coding, coding the intention of healing the street. So over time, as the buildings become, get replaced, it gradually becomes better and better and better. In other words, it's a code that actually is all about what the intention is. Whenever you have a code that knows what it wants to be, the code immediately becomes thin. When you get a fat, unwieldy code, that's a code that doesn't know what the city wants to be, and, but it makes the lawyers happy because there's all sorts of virtues like equality and precision and so forth. But you say, what city does this make? Well, we don't know, but it's fair, right? Everybody has the same parking ratio. Everybody has the same setback. It's fair, and we'll win the lawsuits when we get sued. But basically, it has no intention. And the thin codes are the ones that are very intentional, that really are coordinated with the plan. The thick codes are lawyer codes. It can only be interpreted by lawyers or architects who are like lawyers. And those are not the best architects. They don't understand the city. Uh, parking is in the back, plenty of parking still in the back. And of course, this will come to you labeled. Okay, labeled. This is the, this is the existing street very speedy, wide lane street. By the way, it doesn't have that many cars, and it doesn't even have that many lanes. It's just that everything is so wide that the cars go at 35, 45, 50 miles an hour. It's not the number of cars that's hostile, it's the speed, okay? It's the speed that's a problem. And so when you bury, why would you bury the wires? Is it enough to bury the wires? No, you bury the wires in order to plant trees. That's the obvious second step. So we came here and you were burying, spending millions of dollars burying the wire, and we said, well, where are the trees? Well, we haven't thought about it. Well, the planters are too narrow. This is the proposal, okay? The proposal is to have parked cars that provide a buffer for the pedestrian, because the psychology of the speeding car is very unpleasant. Shade and spatial definition, not cobra heads that make your skin look sallow and sick and uh, wider sidewalks, reservation for future transit. Remember, this is long-term, and the younger people want transit. You know, that's a checklist item. You know, even LA is getting, is getting transit, streetcar, and this is the new section, and of course, these are the pipes that we know where they are. Nicely done, this was shown to the, to the so this is what you have. And by the way, this is the very, very, very nicest section. Very nice, you know, these, Quite nice looking apartments are up close. You have a big tree. There are no gaps. This is the nicest section. You bury the wires. Wow, that was worth it. <laughs> okay, but this is what matters. You widen the planters and the sidewalks. You put a rumble strip, strip in the middle that is ready for left turn lanes and you know, uh, uh, certain emergencies and so forth, but it is really for future transit and then you put the cars in that protect the pedestrians, and then you put the trees in. Okay, this is the transportation. Okay. By the way, you may, you may realize that this is normal. This is merely normal. This is what an American street is supposed to look like. And this is the old standard, this is the old standard of a highway that was, by the way, it, this street was reamed out. It used to be nice, but it was reamed out as it became committed entirely to the automobile. So that's what you get. By the way, the people that are coming in with blinders that don't even know they're crossing High Point because they've been through miles of horrible sprawl misery, you know, strip development, ugly as can be, you know, speedy cars. So they're coming in like this with their blinders in. They're not gonna discover that you have a cool little place here unless you're radical because they don't open up the blinders until you do what we do there. It has to really, really change, okay? Or they won't notice. They'll just, they'll go right past it and then go a back to their sprawl and they won't notice. You will have been used 
as a commuter street. And one way to think about this when we say the commuters are going to be slowed up, well, first of all, it's quite all right to slow them up to 30. It's very efficient. But remember, they're borrowing your main street. Okay? The people going through are borrowing your main street, and they're just, and the people who live on them own the main street. You have to reverse. It's not all about the cars and the people on the side have to put it up. We have to reverse that relationship. And the streetcar that you called for at the last moment, by the way, a Thomas built streetcar. Uh, before we came here, uh, Peter Freeman and his office, uh, Freeman Kinnett, they've been working, they've been very active in this area. You know, there's action, there's been action. And they had a whole series of, also they've been dreaming uh, throughout the recession of things that could be done. They've been looking at the sites, where are the apartment buildings, what can be done here or there. And when we arrived, there were about a dozen projects that they had developed that were very, uh, very, uh, I think, um, perceptive. We never would have perceived that these were opportunities. And so here they are, one after the other, quite thoroughly designed. You know, and some of them are already in the pipeline, ready to be built, many of them ready to go. This is one of my favorites. This is an existing building, which was gonna be knocked down, and actually, but it's nice. And so they kept it, and they add to the back. That kind of surgical intervention is extremely important. You know, this is your library. This is your a museum of furniture. And to really get off the ground, it needs an elevator. You know, very surgical interventions that m takes that, that uh, half mile of, uh, of Main Street and, begin, uh, and gets it going. So you can start very quickly. I think, to start doing these things. YMCA, just off the main street, et cetera. Okay, there's stuff to do right away. So we broke up this project into the uptown Farris intersection that I just described to you. Then there's the library, the library square, the gateway, and then the phase two, which is the uptown Wellborn area. By the way, what's holding Wellborn, uh, Wellborn to the future is that it really is miserable. It never was anything but sprawl. You know, it's not as if we're bringing it back to anything. The McDonald's is the original building, you see. So this is a different thing. It's going to take longer. While down here, there were original buildings. There's some genetic material that you can work with, and you can clone it back into shape. Uh, so let's look at the library. So here's the library. Here's the Presbyterian Church. And this is the great landmark, which is the Krispy Kreme. And this is, who knows what this is, nobody's been able to tell me, but which goes to show you that it's, it's not important. This is the library, which is very peculiar because it faces north. Like, why is it facing that way? Isn't that strange? But actually, it was very helpful because it's what you see when you come from the north, and it actually provides this second gateway. Remember, we're only fully revitalizing a half mile, which is a lot. It's really a lot, that half mile. It's longer than... Yeah, as I said, longer than Greensboro, but we need beginnings and ends. And this provides a great end. Now, over here, an earlier generation of traffic engineers had made a mess. <laughs> and this is what was being repaired with six lanes. So we intervened, we designed uh, something, and this is the end. This is the, the joint design, which is beautifully elegant, a kind of slight figure eight that actually looks like a, like a square and does a nice job with this existing, uh, this isn't a law office, what is it? A bank, an ex a nice classical bank. And we took down the indescribed buildings, made a bent building like this that actually completes the square. It straddles both sides of the street. Maybe you'll even pave it across. You'll pave it across with the pavers, the rumble strip pavers, so that you have a square that straddles both sides of the main street. And then just by taking the terrible parking lot, which by the way, it's not even as good as a Walmart parking lot because they inherited half the parking lot from a, an ex-Burger King. So it's incoherent. But when you look at that library, all you see is this incoherent parking in front of it. That's its forecourt. Uh, we planted two rows of slightly curved alleys of trees like this under which you can park, cleared it for a green, cleared another one for a green that could become actually is absolutely set to become a really working 
a farmer's market, which is kind of already happening there already, with the trucks being able to come in and unload. So there's a farmer's market here, something that would really work. There's a beautiful green with the parking underneath and then additional parking for employees is in the back. And we put a canopy in front of the library because the, that library has its, its, its entrance is too low. From the car, from this distance, when you're driving down, you don't see it. And you have this spectacular success of the canopy in front of the big building you know, uh, at the Civic Center downtown at the Civic Square where so many things happened, that white canopy. That's a great success. We took the same design, which is almost like a brand for you now, and put it in front of the library so that some of the same kind of stuff can happen, but above all, so that it can be seen as you come in on this axis. And so this is what it looks like, okay? We clean this up, and as you drive down here, the axis hits like that. It just receives you in a beautiful forecourt that shields you. This is a useful building that could, it's a conventional, uh, it's a conventional commercial building and it plays off the church. We're gonna do a better rendering when we have more time. This is the, this is the, um, the Krispy Kreme. <laughs> By the way, and look at how nice this square is. This used to be a terrible traffic intersection and now it's a seriously nice place. So, because this, I would say, success happened so early in the charrette, there's a lot of disgruntled people that came in at that point and said, what about me, what about my road, what about my problem? There was a whole Johnson Street, you know, too much speeding, people being killed, all this, you know, the whole litany of overspeed street. So we opened up a Pandora's box, and my first, my first take on it is, I'm not gonna, I understand your problem, it's not on our site. Okay, that's not in our outline. But one of, the, one of you made the case that if we have a success, we will impinge, impinge on them. And at least Johnson Street on this side, actually, that they deserve attention. It's very, very close in. And so we said, okay, better get them on our side. And uh, <laughs> our traffic engineer took on the big problem, which actually is caused way north, you know, as the grid becomes sparser and sparser, you know, this is a nice dense grid, which means you, disp you disperse, it's a dense network. The traffic is dispersed going two ways. Because the grid is so sparse up here by the highways, because the highways have so few entries, you see what happens is certain streets are privileged, like Commerce and Johnson Street, and Johnson has incredibly speedy traffic as a result of something that's happened 10 miles north. And so they began to engage uh, that, uh, by the way, this is the existing, just, uh, I'm going back to something. This is the existing condition of, a, an, of, of the library that I spoke about. This is the kind of mess that we first saw last Wednesday. And then this is what we proposed, and then this is how it ended up. Okay, I, I, I was just out of sequence there. Now, in terms of the daily profile, the further in you get, the less cars there are. So you can actually slow down the cars. And the whole idea, I'll show you a book, traffic engineering in the immediate post-war period had a single setting and it was all about the cars. And there was very little difference between suburban modes and urban modes. And suburban modes, of course, no one was gonna walk. And then over the last uh, five to 10 years, uh, some transportation engineers, including the two who are present here, actually started an initiative with the Institute of Transportation Engineers in Washington, the ITE, to write a whole new manual which is context-based. And what that means is that yes, we know the cars have to go through, but the design of the road has to respond to the context through which it is crossing. It isn't just about the car, you know, as if it were a piece of plumbing going through speedily. When it enters, when a town is in the countryside, when a when a, um, a thoroughfare is in the countryside, fine, go fast, you know? We'll have swales, we'll have setbacks, but as it enters the city and it goes through inhabited suburbia and then the main street and then the downtown, you can't keep the constant section. It has to change. The lane widths change, the parking changes, the tree changes, everything changes, the geometries change. That is an official document out of Washington that has to be downloaded locally so it forms part of your, of your standards here. So our guys uh, 
did all the studies. This is what it takes, you know, we had to prove uh, daily profile, southbound, northbound, all these studies were done to prove that as you come in, you can cool it. You know, you don't, it does not have to be so speedy. And of course, the main thing is that you can actually get the speed down. We're not lowering the capacity, you have to get the speed down, and mostly it affects Johnson, okay? And is there a synchro coming up automatically here? No, okay. Well, there's a model that we worked, which, was, which actually shows the cars moving and what happens as you modify the intersections. The disaster is that Johnson is, is a one-way pair, okay? It's a one-way pair. And when you have a one-way street, you can do very quickly. And by the way, Johnson is beautiful, and people are living on it, but it's very, very fast. This is the ITE, the new ITE manual, Designing Walkable Urban Thoroughfares, a Context-Sensitive Approach, ITE. This is the equivalent of Moses <laughs> in the mountain. You know, whoa, okay. You know, this isn't your old hippie uh, 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 mimeograph. This is the real thing. And, and so that was done. I don't know whether those are gonna happen. The other thing that happened is you called in the future for a, uh, for a streetcar, and um, um, streetcars are all about the future, and we designed an, a figure eight system that works very well, particularly connecting. It gets you from the mall, which is gonna be incredibly interesting, to the village center, and it connects the, 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 the college, the, the uh, High Point University, with Ferris on this side. It gets you up to the future, uh, to the future, Javier? Well, well burned, and then it brings you down, you know, which is what you basically need to do. Now, this is a five minute walk to the transit stop, and this is a 10 minute walk, which means everybody in this area is within walking distance of a future transit. Extremely efficient. If you ask us why we didn't go south, it's because that's where our site stopped. But this system, you might do it, an overall system. Now, this is all about reserving right of way. This is all about building it. So when you succeed in having people living downtown, when the tw 21st century finally proves that fuel is too expensive, when the cool young people are here and they don't want to own a car, you're ready. And you don't have to tear everything up again and do it. Okay, so I do know transit does not lead, the population leads. The population will lead before the streetcars are there, but you do have to set up for the streetcar now or you will tear everything up. And it's wonderful to see how well the system works. Look at how you're blanketed all the way to the country club. You're blanketed with uh, a pedestrian shed. And then there are the greenways and the bikeways. Uh, which are a combination of, uh, of trails, lanes, and routes, uh, pretty well designed. The most fortunate of all is the beautiful greenway that comes from the park, from, uh, actually it's a huge greenway, but it comes through the university and takes from the university directly down again to Farris. Remember, Farris is the center of uptown, and bringing the students there makes sense, but also the students wanna go up to the mall and up to the, up to the town center. We dropped, originally we thought that, uh, that uh, Lexington would be the main trajectory, we dropped it. Uh, it's too violent and it doesn't lead to the center of things. So if you see our, our original contract, it says we have to design Jefferson and we said no, uh, excuse me, Lexington, we're gonna design Ferris instead. That turns out to be the center. So there it is. And of course, uh, one of your great uh, uh, high point, um, I think, um, early early entrepreneurs was Mr. Thomas, who made the streetcars for everybody, including New Orleans. So here you have a tradition. By the way, the streetcars we're talking about are more or less like this one. Don't do anything high speed and scary. Nobody likes them. You know, this is a really sociable streetcar. The, the other genius is this, and I think that this, is the, this guy is the equivalent of Henry Ford uh, for the 21st century. This is your uh, North Carolina Malcolm McLean and he invented the shipping container. Where would the world be without shipping containers? Just, just speculate about that. Loading the furniture into wooden crates, you know, nothing coming from China. Amazing person. And it's fortunate that he's from North Carolina because many of our ideas have to do with shipping containers instead of buildings. 
uh, that coincides with some with the, the most creative initiatives having right now in architecture schools and among young people and exactly the entrepreneurs that I was speaking about earlier. We want to get in cheap. We want to get in so we can incubate a container slightly used cost a thousand dollars. It's amazing and you can inhabit it. You know, there's nothing quite like a container in terms of affordable um, both storage and housing. And this is your guy uh, from North Carolina. Now, the second, the second part, notice that there are no containers so far. By the way, the, the word he would have used is C-CAN, S-E-A-CAN, because it was, uh, it was a container for sea shipping. Okay, so C-CANs, there were no C-CANs so far, but the downtown is locked up. Remember, there are no shops. What are we supposed to revitalize? There is no shop, and even the market, even the market buildings, the big building and the exhibition building, lock up between events. We literally have nothing to work with except parking lots. And no one is going to actually spend any money on a real building until we prove that the real buildings have, have value. Do you know that, that mill buildings are being sold from between $1.50 and $25 a square foot? Okay, right now you know, within the last couple of months. There is no market for real estate. We can't start, you know, in a, a normal building, decent, costs $125 a square foot. There is no market, we can build nothing. We have to make this place sufficiently cool as a first generation that then people can properly come in and build buildings. Unless we want to subsidize everybody to do everything, and that's not even exciting. You know, you end up with sheetrock palaces, and the kids have seen that, and they're not interested. They're interested in sea cans. So these, these, everything we've done downtown is an absolute, you know, is, is dependent upon the sea cans. So let's go. So here you are, just to orient you. This is the exhibition building. This is the big building. This is your, your central civic square, very prominent, happens to be a parking lot. Uh, you have... You have a precious site here, you know, uh, facing east that's open. Perfect location for a civic building. Of course, this is your town hall. This is a hotel. By the way, you're, if you listen to us, your town hall won't have to grow because we're not that interested in increasing bureaucracy. So you can stay there. <laughs> a poor old hotel facing the wrong way which goes to show you the opinion that it has of your presumably civic square. <laughs> and it's now being renovated. And then uh, an interesting place back here, which is a pit, which we've done quite a lot for. And then just over here, from here on Kivet Street, from here to here, down to here, just that L and a little bit here, is the only urban fabric you have of shop fronts that's the equivalent of your favorite places, which are Elm Street in, in, um, in Greensboro, and what's the one in Winston-Salem? Fourth Street in Winston-Salem. You know, we can't do something out of nothing, and that, those are your main streets. By the way, they're kind of full over here. There's a fantastic crepe store, actually the best food. <laughs> Truer, true urban pioneer, ready to go into the next shop, and absolutely nothing happening on Grand. Grand is amazingly sort of, I'm sorry, Maine. Maine is amazingly awful, sorry, if you own one of those shop businesses, but it is. And then here you have a beautiful parking lot that belongs to the, C, to the North, uh, North State Communications and they're underutilizing it radically. Only, I saw it every, every, every hour of the night and day, only half the parking spaces are used. It's got two trays, and the tray to the north is not being used. And here you have an empty building, also belonging to uh, North State Communications, which would be a great kids' museum. Okay, and it wasn't our idea, somebody mentioned it. So I looked at it and I said, uh, we visited the kids' museum, of course it's for sale, etc. But I said, how many millions will it take to turn that into a kids' museum? Why not do something really cool with sea cans for the kids? Okay, so we had an idea there. 
We also have, facing these pretty nice storefronts on Kivet, is open parking lots. Open, a desert of parking lots. Mostly owned by Wells Fargo. And of course, you can't have a main street that's not two-sided. I mean, we're not a strip shopping center here. And so we have another set, a very low, thin liner set of sea cans here, totally cool in its, in its, uh, in its layout to make, uh, to make um, uh, cafes and so forth. And there's a beautiful slide. We had a wonderful architect from Alabama, very young woman, who do, who's doing these on the beach and they're just to die for. She takes three sea cans, puts, puts awnings on them and you just wanna spend all day there. And uh, unfortunately I forgot to put uh, one of her projects here but we'll show you her design. And then at the last moment, somebody said, could we please, we miss our ability to meet. You know, before uh, this uh, uh, international market center was bought by Bain Capital, they used to let us use the open spaces. We would do things down, down there. We could have, you know, we could have smaller conventions. We could have the fly fish conventions. The kids could have their their, uh, their senior proms, like you could actually do things downtown. And Bain Capital has a different business model that locks it up also. It's all fully leased. So you're left a quite a substantial town, which you are, and a wealthy one too, without a single large space in which to meet. So I asked around and I said, what do you want? They said, well, we'd like to be big enough for basketball to see, you know, just to incubate the basketball team for High Point, but what we really want is to be able to seat between 1,500 and 2,000 people. We said, check, and then we want to have the smaller conventions that'll, be, that'll help us actually make, you know, get rid of our spikes, of our big spikes. There are all sorts of people that would, we could have a convention here. It would help with the hotels, it would help with the inn, it would help with the restaurants. So we said, fine, we got that. And then the other thing was the white building here, which I'll talk to you about, which is the old, it's a building that's had four names. It's a white high-rise, I'll show it to you. And the best plan, when I arrived here, it belongs to the International Market Center, and they said, we'll give it away, but we want you to demolish it. Profoundly unecological, profoundly uncreative. So, uh, in order to make, to make an, um, a, um, not an auditorium, a, um, an amphitheater, an outdoor amphitheater. So we work with that too. Okay, so let me show you. Uh, I'm a little skeptical about this idea here. Uh, putting trees everywhere, trees everywhere. But one of you uh, asked for that, and of course it's the, it's the easy thing to do to make a place look instantly great, it's shady, it's nice. I think that's an awful lot of money, you know, to landscape the train. Somebody asked for that to landscape from Washington Street uh, coming in from there and so forth. But I think that a couple of landscaping uh, um, initiatives should take place. This main square, this main square doesn't need to be a parking lot. You can actually put trees on the edge under which you can park exactly the same number of cars that you have now and clear the center for a beautiful lawn, which in fact is the size of a football field. Not the, that you play football, just to give you a sense of size. And that would be suitable, that would be a worthy civic square. The open site here, is a precious site in the future. Right now, no one has an idea, it's an open parking lot. We have put in our master plan that that is to be reserved for a civic building. It is absolutely reserved. It has to be civic because it is the cross axis of your future, of your, of your town center, okay? You can't go around finding another place. When you're finally gonna build an auditorium or a future city hall or something else, you can't be competing with a dead supermarket somewhere for a site. It's the exact cross axis. So this is not, from our point of view, this is not permitted to be anything but a civic building, okay? And then some landscaping here and there, but the basic thing is I'm a little down on all that landscaping. I'd like to see it concentrated here. And because this street called Commerce is such a misery, it's really quite mind boggling. And um, it is nothing but loading docks. And, and blank walls, and yet this is the principal artery of the people who come to your town actually to buy furniture. It's absolutely amazing. You know, they go up and down, the bulk of your, and, and I think that perhaps uh, international 
the, the, the market can be induced to actually make it civilized. So we did a, so what we're actually proposing here is this for landscaping, Commerce Street, the town square, and we designed a very inexpensive, but magnificent auditorium here because you called for it. So let's go, and I'll show you. Okay, the first thing is your storefronts, okay, the nice, the nice places that you have. Now let me get myself oriented here. This, okay, this here, I believe I am right in this. No, this here is the best from here to here is the best chance you have at having a storefront. Okay, this is where the shops are. This is the, this is of course is Maine here going down to the town center. This is Wells Fargo and these are Wells Fargo's parking lots which are preventing this from being a double-sided street. So, you know, for what I would call the middle class family, not even middle class, for the family mar uh, segment, this is what makes the most sense. Okay, and here's another picture of it in the other direction. I believe this is in the other direction. Let's see, where am I here? Uh, got it. Okay, here it is. So underneath here are decent stores, almost a um, I don't know how many, how many, probably 800 feet of decent stores, and in front, nothing but miserable parking lots. So the scheme that we're saying is, okay, you're welcome to keep your enormous drive-through. I don't know what, <laughs> you know what they were thinking uh, when they built the famous 12-lane uh, <laughs> drive through at downtown. But I would say certainly, certainly from here to here, if we could please have the first 30 feet of underutilized parking to provide a temporary masking building to make a double-sided street. Okay, so this is where it is. These are the existing buildings with the good shops, this is the terrible parking, and we're proposing just that much. These are sea cans, taking almost no parking at all out, but having a tremendous effect. Okay, there it is up tight, uh, further up close. Sea cans are very light. Liner buildings hold the street space without spending a lot of money, and it looks like that. Okay, where you stack them up, you have stairs up and down, cafes. By the way, this is a much better drawing than this projector shows but these are very hot little cafes and things completing the street. The, the storefront is on the other side, and of course, the stores on the other side will need a wider sidewalk. Uh, this is now going down Kivet. We just showed you that. This is the empty building of North, uh, of North State Communications. This is the existing North State, and this is the double parking lobe of which that side is not used and instead of renovating the building at millions and millions and millions of dollars, for a small fraction of that, we could have a much cooler museum, if we can a kids' museum, if we can bo borrow this tray of parking. And taking up the diagonal, right, this is the tray that we're keeping. If we use this tray, we can incubate a museum, which, by the way, in the end, could connect to the entrance of the building. I mean, we could connect it, you know, once you're successful. So we designed this set of sea cans like that with courtyards, and by the way, above, here it is. It's this lobe of parking. You see the cars that are here? They can all fit here. There's obviously no need for this. And notice how this one lines up directly on the entrance. So if you remove this street, and this becomes a successful incubator for the museum, you can actually enter a much larger building. The key, I think, to, the, to this kid's playground is that the parents have something to do. And so at the edges of this playground, three enclosed courtyards with really cool, slightly dangerous things to do. <laughs> uh, if they want safe, they can go to the McDonald's, you know, whatever, or Chuck E. Cheese. But, you know, this is more fun than usual. And the parents on the edges are actually drinking coffee and having beer and having a chat. Well, their kids play in the courtyards, uh, which I know parents are, are, and this is what it looks like. We stack them up, and it's a series of courtyards like that. It can be powered by solar devices to just sort of tread the, you know, get the kids worked up about that. You don't, they don't really come to the third floor, that's just visual. It's mostly one set, and then above, the kids can climb to the second floor to use slides. And it looks like that. So they enter here, and there's a courtyard with a covered area, and the parents are all on the side with their Starbucks, 
and the slides come down and there's a second courtyard and a third courtyard and a fourth courtyard and it comes out. The thing, again, uh, boy, if you could see my rendering. I mean, m my screen is so much better, but when you get the report, you'll be able to really see it. And you get the courtyard like this, which is not lugubrious. It's, an, it's again, it's the projector uh, um, being unfortunate. And this is what it looks like from the street. A total kid magnet. You know, not only because of the way it looks, and what does it cost? I mean, this thing, we're talking about $40,000 in containers. We're not talking about insulation. We're talking about, you know, uh, um, a sand floor, shredded rubber. We're talking about very, very little money, but a huge effect and really fun. And that's how you incubate things, low cost. In fact, if you had more money, I wouldn't even be interested. You know, you say, well, why don't we skip this and go ahead and do the $6 million kids museum? Why? To be like every other kids museum in the world? That's not even that much fun, you know? This is fun, and it looks like fun, and it probably is, and it can be continually programmed by the parents. You know, what they bring in there, and by the way, the kids don't even have to agree, and the parents don't have to agree. That's why we have four courtyards, so they can actually have preference. One of them may even bring dogs in. You know, imagine that. Boy, that's gonna bring the lawyers out. <laughs> a dog and a kid in the same park, oh my God. Anyway. And uh, this is the kind of stuff that happens. A slide that actually comes off the second floor. Whoa. <laughs> uh, swings that really you can swing in and out. Anyway, it's quite a place. And by the way, this is meant to be an opening thing. This is a screen or a glass. And the parents are all along the edges. And of course, this is something which is probably that shredded rubber stuff that the kids can fall and not, not hurt themselves. And of course, up here, not so much here, is the, are the solar devices. The other thing, okay, so we're talking about, uh, that's, we show, I showed you 2A, which, was, were, which were the cafes and Kivet. 2B is the playground. 2C is this fantastic pit in the back, which can be entered from Main Street here. And this is the place that gets all the young people excited. By the way, just so you start working yourself up, there's a party at 8 o'clock there tonight. To, that's, you know, with, uh, with, uh, with bands and lights and completely impromptu, completely tactical, and just to prove that actually we can survive this. And the city council, <laughs> you know, we don't want to break the ice. We want to just go for it. You know, we want to uh, jump. And you know what? We're in, uh, you know, I've been there with all kinds of humans. I've made four trips, followed by people and all sorts of people of every age and every fitness, and they all did it and survived. So there's a good chance. Uh, but, you know, I think there's a spirit here that particularly the city manager who says, I want this to happen quickly. And I think velocity, when we leave, what's often lost is velocity. You know, there's a lot of impulse, a lot of excitement, and then it becomes bureaucratic. I think, you know, they would be uniquely, uniquely different if this actually took off. And it looks like it's going to start tonight. So uh, some of the ideas, I think you know this. There's a big parking garage underutilized. It's a whole series of slopes and decrepit, broken down uh, slabs and parking garages, some pathetic leftover from the 1960s uh, entryway, which is, of course, totally cool now. And uh, it can be entered from both sides. It's got ramps. So the idea is to take it. Okay, you can only understand this. There's no way to draw this, really. You can only understand it uh, when you go there. But, the, okay, you, you recognize that? <laughs> Do not change the typeface, please. <laughs> this is not made anymore anywhere in the world. <laughs> and so you enter, and there are lights on top, and mylar mirrors and sauna tubes and who knows what going on there, speakers on the roof. And um, so these are the ideas. Uh, build a hill, dump some dirt and grass or AstroTurf here to make it very, very cheap auditorium at the same angle as the ramp, which is here. The ramp remains so that food trucks can come in and form a place. This is that comb of, you know, the white building 
which is, it doesn't have a name, I'm gonna call it the white building, the white gridded building has this, which is totally elegant. It's an extremely elegant building, except it has a really dopey cone, like a, like a uh, dunce cap. We're obviously removing that when we redo it, but we took it over here and tilted it on the side <laughs> to form a, <laughs> to form an auditorium. A, a what? Noble's Pyramid. Noble's Pyramid. Uh, on top, on top for the daylight, but also at night, uh, sand volleyball, the sport of, uh, of the age. Uh, over here, lots of first-rate graffiti, more, more uh, food trucks, which, I mean, this is great that this was originally a parking garage, more food trucks, and the furnishing consists entirely of cleaned up old tractor tires for benches and pickle buckets, as well as uh, what, spools, okay? The thing is edgy. The thing is about lighting and chain link fence and leaving it the way it is and, uh, and, uh, and spontaneous, extremely low cost. Wh how do I know this works? Because there's one of these in Miami that has emerged in last year, very low cost, high management, and it's, it's cleaning up. It's the coolest place in Miami. And the place, the, the, and, it, and it's just a bunch of empty parking lots. It's the programming of the future. The look is exactly this. The look is, is edgy as can be. I've never seen an edgier place than this. You actually won't harm yourself, but it looks like you will. <laughs> what more do you want? So we're, we're working this up. Look at that pyramid, man. Did you know that that was that cool? And of course, we're gonna have the people that do uh, windshield tinting do the first fresco. This is the, the, the big chain link fences on top, beautifully lit, Fra uh, uh, graffiti everywhere that can change. Uh, these are the tractor tires. These, I've never seen a pickle bucket, but I think you know what they are. And then spools. So the furniture just moves around, just like we do in Miami, and just spray painting everywhere. And this is the underground band. Now, this cannot be drawn. This can only be seen, and that's why we're having the party tonight. You can just see it for yourself, you know, just the potential of this place. Now, who's gonna use this? This is gonna be used, this is worth driving 75 miles, okay? You have a market here of 330,000 students. You know what this does? This totally bypasses and leaves in the dust whatever Winston-Salem thinks it's doing, you know, whatever Greensboro thinks it's doing. You know, that's old 20th century stuff. It's pretty good, but it's not, it's not what's coming up. And I've seen this. In fact, Durham is the only place that's actually uh, making one of this. A friend of mine called Bob Chapman saw it in Miami. He's building one in Durham. And, uh, and so we'll see if this happens. And so far, no one has been against this. So let's keep it going. If this succeeds, uh, of course, we can do it in, mother, in, in other parking lots. There's actually quite a competition among the parking lots now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, will you do it in my parking lot? Uh, what I like about this one is that it's owned by the city, so it doesn't have to be pulled out during market, and um, it's owned by the city, and so it can be essentially permanent. Well, the parking lots always have to be pulled out uh, for the market. Uh, so let's look at this. What are we seeing here? Okay, this is Commerce. Oh, yes, Commerce, the miserable street, uh, coming down from, uh, this is, uh, where is this the big, yes. Over here is the big, bo the big, uh, the big what? Okay, this is the big, this is the big, the big building, and then this is a building that has no, basically no floor.